All right, hello, this is Mr. Wallace again with the Algebra 2. Uh, this is Unit 2 Semester Exam Review, so function basics. There's going to be a few pages here. This is page 2. All right, here we go. We're going to jump right in. Uh, the very first thing that we need to, you know, with these graphs, determine, circle all the following, which represents a function. All right, for a graph to be a function, it has to pass our vertical line test. If you draw any vertical line throughout and only touches once, that means we have a function. So right now, I see A is a function, only touches once. B is a function, only touches once. C is a function, only touches once. Is D a function? Vertical line, it touched twice, not a function. Uh, let's look at letter E. Yep, only touches once, that's a function. Letter F. Somewhere we draw it up, touches twice, not a function. Letter G, anywhere touches, yep, only touches once. Letter G is a function. And the reason why H, this is a piecewise, the reason why H is not a function, if we draw a vertical line through these two solid dots, that means there's two Y values for one X value. That is not a function. All right, um, which of the functions, so of the ones we circled, are also one-to-one? -one. For it to be a one-to-one, -one, it has to pass the horizontal line test. And so I'm going to draw a horizontal line through the graph. And if the horizontal line uh, touches only once, that means that it is a one-to-one -one function. So horizontal line, well, letter A, horizontal line. So B is a function, but it's not a one-to-one -one because my horizontal line touches twice. Oh, look, C is a one-to-one, -one, okay? Letter E is a normal function, but not a one-to-one -one, because horizontal line touches twice, and then same thing with G. So it's just A and C, horizontal line test on that one. Which relation is not a function? Number two, so we have to look and see. It all depends on the X values. The Y values really don't matter. If I have any repeating X values, that means it is not a function. And already I can tell which relation is not a function, A. Because let's look, I have a 2 here, a 2 here, repeating x values. They have different y values, so that is not a function. And all the rest don't have repeating x values. All right, number 3, given the graph below, identify the following, state all the values. Whenever I have my value in the parentheses, that's always my x value. It's always my x value. So on the graph where my x value is negative 4, what's my corresponding y value? Well, my corresponding y value, oh, is right there, 5. It's like a coordinate point, negative 4, 5. Where my x value is 0, my y value is also 5. It's just coincidence, that's okay. Where my x value is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what's my y value all the way up here at 12? There you go. All right, so... Find x when f of x equals 0. So that's my y value of 0. f of x is just y. So when my y value is 0, what's my x value? The only time it touches is right here at negative 5. When my y value is 8, where's my y value of 8? Um, it's going to be right here. Oh, there's a few of them. A y value is 8 here, here, here. Here. What are those x values? Uh, negative 1, negative 3. So negative 1, negative 3, and then 3 and 7. The absolute maximum. All right, it's the highest point. Highest point of the graph is 5, 12. The absolute minimum. Guess what? There is none. Because this arrow means it's going to be going down to infinity, and we can't define infinity, so there's no absolute minimum. Now, the relative minimums is like one of those, uh, it's, you know, those peaks and valleys, right? The relative minimums and relative maximum peaks and valleys. Where's a valley on this graph? Well, there's a valley right here where it's down. That's a relative minimum, and that point is 1, 4. And then all relative maximums, where's another peak? Uh, there's a peak right here at negative 2, 9, and obviously another peak at, whoop, right there, 5, 12. What is my y-intercept? Where it crosses the y-axis, 0, 5, 
what is my x-intercept? X-intercept, you can have multiple x-intercepts. In this case, we just have one, that's fine. Uh, that is negative five comma zero for my x-intercept where it crosses. My domain, okay, my domain is my x values. Range is all my y values. My domain, my leftmost x value to my rightmost x value. Well, if that arrow is going down and kind of to the left forever and ever and ever, my domain, it starts at negative infinity. That's an infinity symbol, right? And where does it go to? It goes, my x value is just my x-axis. It ends at 8, but the reason why we put a parenthesis is because it's an open circle. It goes up to 8, but does not include 8. Range, same thing. I'm only focusing on my y values. It's coming from negative infinity, right? From bottom to top, it's coming from negative infinity. And where does it stop? Where's the highest point? The highest point is at 12, and this graph does touch 12, so I have a bracket. That's why it includes it. All right, this was page two of our unit two function review.